YouTube. Thanks for coming and checking out another Fat Guy Builds episode. Today we're doing water meth injection. Not the crackhead meth with the little messed up teeth. Like water methanol injection. We're going to do it on this uh, WRX here. Here's the part number for the water meth kit. When you open the box you're going to get all the goodies. So we got a 1.15 gallon tank. And this one I kind of like that. Then everything's set up in different little compartments here. So this looks like a hose. And what feels like a bunch of hardware. Yeah. Hardware. Garbage. Oh, I almost threw this. There's the brain. Here's the pump. More garbage. And all the lines and wiring. So we had to go buy a couple parts. We got an arming switch just to turn the system on and off. A vacuum T for the boost reference. Um, we're going to tee off of the boost gauge. Put it on the drill. Oop. Tighten it down and you're going to pull the trigger. So you need to twist yellow and green. And uh, what is this? Gray and purple. purple. And gray. Yeah. For the arm switch, you're going to have the switch. The yellow that goes into the unit goes to one side of the switch. Then 12 volt battery goes to the other side of the switch. And then this LED, I'm not sure if this just tells you it's spraying or if it tells you that the tank's low. I'm not quite sure which what that is. I didn't get that far in the directions. But that's gray and purple. So we twisted those. And then we're going to wire that to the LED that comes with the kit. I took a what a three sixteenths or a quarter inch drill bit, popped a hole in this grommet, then fed through the water meth feed and the boost reference. For the boost reference, I teed off of the line that's on the pressure output of the turbo. Here's two little adapter pieces we needed to do in order to put this in between the throttle body and the intercooler. Here are the three pieces, obviously, well, two pieces and the jet. This is what it's going to look like put together. And the coupler is getting, this is going to, we're going to drill a hole in the coupler and then this is going to sandwich it to hold it. That way, the jet screws into a piece of metal and it's not going to pop out with boost or any kind of weirdness. This is a test fit, but this is more or less, obviously it's not tight or any of that, but it's what it's going to be like this. Uh, this one is like dry rotted and falling apart and all cracked. So we're going to go buy a new coupler, install this, and then uh, put it back. We drilled a hole with a step bit in the corner of the glove box there. And so then we cut the vacuum line. That just plugs into the unit. Wiring harness plugged in. I'm going to use some two-way sticky tape. And it's going to get mounted here in the corner. So I clean this area off with alcohol and stuff. And the back of this so that the uh, two-way sticky tape actually sticks. Okay, we are done under the dash, well, in the glove box. We're gonna move on to wiring everything and installing the spray nozzle. These are the self-tapping screws I used to mount the pump 
to the back um, strut tower. This is what it looks like mounted to the strut tower. There's a flat piece, just perfect size to mount this. I use two bolts, two or four flat washers and two nuts, drilled two holes, put the hardware through the subframe or whatever you want to call the structural stuff behind the carpet here, and uh, it's all mounted tight. And here's what it looks like with both of them mounted. So the fitting on the tank is just slightly higher than the motor so that way we won't have any weird feed issues to the motor for the wiring harness on the pump you're going to use orange is the ground for the pump pink is the power for the pump from the harness just make sure you have enough slack to make it look pretty at the end the wiring harness part for the tank because we have the tank all the way in the back is too short so we just grabbed some spare wire I had laying around we're gonna get cover it anyways um, put an extension on it and then that is gonna go to the wiring harness over there which is brown is the level for the negative and white is level positive and that's for the level sensor on the tank which tells you hey you need to start filling it up so you can pull your power in your ground for your uh, system any way you want. There just so happens to be an amp with a two gauge wire back here. So I'm just going to tap off that and send that to the unit. Everything's in now. So what we're going to do is beautify this. So we're going to, uh, you know, wire loom, electrical tape, make it all look pretty. I use a quarter inch drill bit to take the supplied LED and mount it inside of this little Subaru thingy. So now I'm going to go and wire this in the dash and just click this back in. There was another blank piece on the Subaru in the dash. So this is the arming switch. Flick it up, it'll be armed. We need to run um, 12 volt power to here and then this one will go to the system to actually turn it on. Wiring up the LED, red is purple, white will be gray, and the purple and gray is what goes to the brain unit. Look at how pretty it is. Down is off. Up is power, more power baby. Off, on. We still need to test everything, but pretty huh all right so everything's power wired powered the switch is working everything's good right so what we're gonna do is just turn the key show that when I flick the switch ignore that crappy radar detector but you see the green light blinking that's when I turn it on so now the next step is we need to flush the system and so I'll show you guys how to do that Fill the tank up with water, and we're going to get everything going to just flush the system. Don't put the jet on. Just have the line running back and do a catch can deal, and then we're going to run it dry with the water and catch it all in here and then dump it out. If you try to flush it with this valve, first off, it's going to take forever because this is a metered valve. Second off, if there is anything in the lines, it's just going to get caught and plug up this valve. Uh, there's a little screen in here, but it will still, well, depending on how much crap you have, it will gum it up and make it nasty. Alright, to flush it finally. I just put everything down to zero just to make life easier. And then you push this button, the green light will come on. And then it will only stay on for a few seconds and shut off and then you have to push test again push test again and you do this until you're all out of fluid
the fluid we are using is the boosty juice. Oh, look, it's so cute. It's red. I'd like to thank all you guys for coming and checking out my video. Hopefully this helped you understand how to install this. There's a lot of videos online and a lot of them are shitty and they don't give the steps and show the wiring and show, oh, how to do this and that because this is a universal kit. So things are going to be different and the kit doesn't come with the switch. The kit doesn't come with some other stuff. Um, so yeah, you want to do it to fit your car. Um, what else? There's an optional solenoid that would make it a quicker turn on. Um, where I guess it keeps boost pressure and then the solenoid just opens and closes faster. Uh, I'm going to do some more research. But I'm going to put this kit, but the 5 gallon kit, on my Focus ST. And show you guys how that works. And then I'll also do a dyno run with it with the kit turned on and the kit turned off. So, till next time, wrench on.